Uh, hi, uh, this is Don Keller. I'm a partner at Oric in the Emerging Companies Group in Menlo Park, and I'm here with David Silverman uh, of Crosslink Capital, uh, who has been a very active investor at Crosslink. Uh, and David, uh, I'd love to hear your views on the state of the venture market these days. Yeah, thanks so much. I really appreciate the opportunity. So uh, Crosslink Capital, we're about halfway through our most recent fund. We're in our sixth fund, started in 1989. And I think with respect to the health of the, uh, the market in venture, but more specifically with growth, uh, it's unbelievably healthy. So there is a, uh, a, a series of discontinuities, obviously, in the public market, which we're really, really sensitive to because half of our firm is public investing and half of our firm is part that I'm invested with, which you and I have worked together with right. on the private side. The public markets had a bit of a sine wave, and, and I would expect that would continue. Uh, but on the, public, on the private side, I'm sorry, Don, um, it, it's very healthy. Um, and in fact, despite some of the discontinuities that we might have seen with sort of company by company perspective, there's a lot of capital to put to work. Um, there's a lot of smart um, men and women in our industry who are really, really focused on trying to put that money to work on the private side. And we feel really confident with respect to the health of the growth aspect of the private market. That's and great. I could talk and when you say that. growth, are you talking about early stage growth companies or mid stage or late stage or all? Probably all. I think um, the uh, buzz with respect to more the PR aspect of our industry is on the growth or the later stage. Um, I think that the secondary aspect of that market is going to be potentially challenged, but the primary aspect in terms of primary dollars, which is really relevant to your business and our business, I, I think is really, really healthy and will continue to be healthy. On a, our, you know, the way we, you know our business, but our business is sort of um, from the very earliest stage to the growth equity stage on the private side, and all of those show robustness. So I'm not concerned with respect to a bubble in terms of the business that we participate in. I think on the secondary piece of the business, there's a, there's a different conversation. I'm happy to have that with you. But um, you know, that's nothing that we've participated in right. historically. And, and so therefore, I, we're not worried about it going forward. How about the areas? We're hearing a lot about big data and the cloud. Uh, we're hearing less about clean tech. Yeah. Uh, we're hearing more about the enterprise. Is that a fair sort of sense of the direction of things, or are you more focused still on consumer-oriented deals? Yeah, no, that's a totally fair question. So when we launched our seed program about, was it, 23, 24 months ago, our assumption was that we were going to be almost exclusively consumer on that early stage. So that was wrong. So we're probably 50-50 in terms of consumer versus enterprise on the super early stage of the business. On the other stages of our investing business, what we're finding is it's, it skews far more on the enterprise side of the business. And I think in terms of things that we're interested in and we're spending time on, Don, um, it's really business to business sales that look like software businesses. So all the, although the route to market or the technology might be Ruby on Rails or, or whatever and, and a SaaS sales program in terms of how we're delivering against our customers, um, we're just seeing a real enterprise buyer um, uh, bias that, 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 that I didn't fully anticipate and that I think will continue going forward. That's good news for the industry generally that there's more enterprise related sales because enterprise drives real cash and real dollars and real revenues. I think it's really good news. So are we interested in consumer, which is sort of where you started the conversation? Completely, full stop, end of story. We're very interested in consumer and I hope we do a heck of a lot more consumer businesses. But where the bias is is on the enterprise side for a couple of reasons. One is, um, and the primary reason is um, that you know, we, we face an uncertain macroeconomic time 
but I believe that that given the um, macro secular changes in terms of how people are buying software and thinking about technology, and we could talk about this in, in, in a heck of a lot more detail, th there's, there's an enormous opportunity for venture-backed businesses to uh, participate there, and we're seeing that you know, sort of across our whole portfolio, and, I, and, and actually, frankly, I'd lean forward on that in terms of our overall um, opportunity to invest. Um, secondly, I think what's interesting is um, there, and relevant to your question, is there's this taking of consumer go-to-market and bringing that into the enterprise, and that's really, really relevant to our portfolio. Like, and we're seeing like that across Yammer stages. And Microsoft, for example. Yeah, I, and and candidly, you know, we're not. That was an Oracle client, by the way. Yammer was oh, sold yeah. to Microsoft. So Just yeah, we, we wish we had, and and uh, and you know, good, good, good fortunes to you. So we should, we, we should have done that. But I think, you know, in all sincerity, that that's a exemplary of how there's a convergence of consumer and enterprise. And I don't think they're distinct or, you know, concurrently separated, and they won't be. But there is a confluence with respect to go-to-market that's really relevant to what we do. And I think you'll see that in terms of the money we put to mar we put into the market going forward. How about hardware related businesses that sell to the enterprise? Are, are they off the radar screen still? You know, hmm. networking, storage, semiconductors. Yeah. You guys make investments in that area? Or we do, we do. So, um, um, so the direct answer is they're not off the radar screen. So an example would be, I mentioned that we do the full scale of private equity and we invested in the late stage with Corey, it's one of our largest private investments here in the Valley, which is a storage business that is a hardware business. So they deliver real systems to customers. Um, they differentiate based upon the software, not based upon the hardware, but it's a, it, I would think of it in the context of your question as right. a real systems business. Um, Nevertheless, and so we feel great about that, and we will look opportunistically at everything, but um, in the context of your question, where do the dollars go? The dollars have really gone towards software and internet, and so um, we're, we're happy. We've made tons of money in uh, everything from semiconductors to systems to software to services, um, but I think where the opportunities are really lean if we lean against the wind here on the software and on the services and on the internet side of that equation. What do you look for when a company comes to you and, and makes a pitch and you, you, you see the plan? Do you, is it the, is it the team? Is it the, how they approach it? What, mm -hmm. what, what advice can you give to somebody that wants to come and pitch a venture firm? Uh, what advice could I give? Okay, um, I'll tell you what we could look at, and then uh, let's figure out what the advice would be. So when I got in the business like 16 years ago, I, I kind of thought of it more in the traditional business school perspective of markets and uh, competitive advantage and team and product, et cetera. My learning lesson is it's really all about the CEO and the team. Um, and, and that sounds like an oversimplification, and I apologize for that. but. We lead on team, and I lead on team, and I've really done, I, I, I can't tell you um, how much my, my mind has changed over the last 10 years with respect to how much more important that is in the context of all the things that are important in terms of making our decisions. So the way I think about it is, we know that we're here and we want to get here, um, and we're going to tack up wind, to use a sailing analogy. And so we don't know kind of you know how far east, how far west, but we know we're going north. And so we bet on teams. And my key learning lesson in this business is um, great founder CEOs make you all the money in the world. Right. And so that's the most important. The factor. most important, yeah. yeah. So to answer your question really, really directly, more important. So in terms of coming back to your question on, so how does that impact what advice we give? It's have resonance with your investors as an entrepreneur pitching to us that you're the right woman or man um, who's the right person to be the CEO of the business. And you have this founder CEO mentality, which is, of course, it's about making a hell, heck of a lot of money, um, but it's about we, we need to be successful at any cost. And that 
resonates really well with us and with me, candidly. Um, and so I'm betting and we cross-link are betting on people. And, and so what I would recommend is don't optimize on dilution or on terms or whatever. There's a market for that. You know, people like you will give right. good advice to um, entrepreneurs on, on, on how to negotiate with people like us. But, but find someone who you believe that you can resonate with and who you believe will be supportive with over 10 years, not over 18 months. And that's, right. that's sort of the perspective I would have in terms of advice if I was on the other side of the table. Well, that's great. One last question for you, David. What do you like most about your job and what do you like least? What I love, oh, I have the best job in the world. Uh, Don, great. so I have the best job. Like I get up at 4:30 in the morning, and you're ready to go. I'm ready to go, That's and great. the reason why is that uh, I'm blessed, and the, I'm blessed because we have insanely smart, unbelievably motivated people who work 20 hours a day, and we get the opportunity to work with them. So, um, and we have diversity, so we get to learn. It's like almost like this unbelievable right. university education. In terms Constant. of learning constantly yeah. about a ton of technologies, a ton of companies, a ton of industries, and you overlay that with like the smartest people in the world, who we have the pleasure of the founders and the entrepreneurs. To. Yeah. So the entrepreneurs are to me. It sort of links to your last question. That's that's what makes me super motivated. We we have the best job in the world. We have we're investing someone else's money <laughs> and someone else. Is, is working 20 hours a day on our behalf, and if they win, we get you right. know the opportunity to participate there, and whatever happens, we learn a ton, and it's it's un, every day is a huge education. Yeah, it's great wonderful to hear. opportunity. Great to hear. Well, this has been very helpful, David. We appreciate it very much, and I um, hope this is helpful to the audience. Thanks. Hey, Don, thank you very much. It's wonderful to work with you and Or. Appreciate it. Thank you.